first to Spring Street and the state government's decision to hold a parliamentary inquiry into church abuse rather than a much more costly and unpredictable royal commission. Police believe there have been at least 40 suicides as a result of sexual abuse in Victoria's Catholic Church. John Kane Jr is the former chief legal advisor to the Bailiw government. He spent five years as the Victorian government solicitor, providing advice on the Bushfires Royal Commission and many parliamentary inquiries. This is his first television interview since leaving that position last year. Well, John Kane, thanks for joining us. Pleasure, Josie. Is a parliamentary inquiry comparable to a Royal Commission? A parliamentary committee is made up of, in this case, six members of the uh, parliament. Uh, a Royal Commission is an independent person, generally a retired judge or senior lawyer. But probably most importantly, the difference is that a Royal Commissioner can grant leave to appear by various parties. So they have the ability to turn up and cross-examine witnesses. Uh, that doesn't occur in a parliamentary committee. Well, as the Victorian government solicitor, you would have turned up to many parliamentary inquiries and provided advice to people appearing before those inquiries. What's your assessment of how they can be run? It's fair to say they're a mixed bag. Um, you have some that run uh, very well and can get down to uh, significant detail and come up with uh, uh, first-rate recommendations. There's then a group of others that uh, seem to inevitably turn into a party political fight. Who knows what will happen with this one, um, but there is a risk that politics will come into play. A royal commission, an independently appointed royal commissioner, is beyond that sort of party political influence. How do you describe the difference, the legal difference, between the investigative abilities of a retired judge or a QC in a royal commission and six MPs? Politicians, they are uh, driven by politics. They're not driven by necessarily the same level of forensic analysis and uh, uh, making uh, or, or getting to the truth of matters in the same way as a Royal Commissioner and making recommendations that have uh, a lasting and long-term impact. So is this a pale imitation of a Royal Commission or a judicial inquiry? It's certainly not the same. Um, and in the end, it's about what the community think about this and what the victims think about it. And if you go back to the bushfires, uh, 2009 bushfires, you go and have a look at the Westgate Bridge disaster or the Longford gas explosion, um, you didn't hear after those events the calls from politicians and the community saying, we need to set up a parliamentary inquiry to deal with this matter. The call was clearly for a Royal Commission because that's considered by the community as the gold standard and the one that they can have most confidence in, that it will get to the detail, it will get to the truth, and it will make recommendations that have lasting impact on the community. So this was the wrong decision? Look, it's not for me to say whether it's the right or the wrong decision. Um, I think the community will judge that in due course. Uh, it may be that this committee can give the victims and the community the confidence um, that they are, uh, that it is going to get to the bottom of things. Um, but I think, I, I certainly have more confidence that a Royal Commission would have given them greater comfort about that. Did it boil down to the cost? There are clearly huge differences. The Bushfires Royal Commission costs $100 million. I get that it's expensive to run Royal Commissions, but in the end, this is about victims. This arises out of uh, 40 suicides that have been reported. Uh, and that's a significant loss of life. Um, and in the end, you've got to make a balance about, uh, or an assessment, about what's the appropriate forum in which to deal with this. Could a parliamentary inquiry force convicted pedophiles to appear before it and answer questions? Yes, it could, um, if, it, uh, if it chose to. However, I suspect that's unlikely. John Kane, you left your position four months after the Bailiw government came to power. Could you not work with that government? No, no, in fact, I worked with them for four months. Um, I left at the end of my contract and I had declared to the uh, former government that I would not be renewing my contract, having spent five years uh, as Victorian government solicitor, a position I thoroughly enjoyed, but it was time to go and do something else. John Kane, thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Josie.